I have been told since I was a baby in the 70s that there was, a, there was this fellow by the name of Mac Davis who used to be a country singer and a folk singer. And I remember riding in the car with my brother or with my parents and the song would come on, Oh Lord, It's Hard to Be Humble. You remember that song? I won't sing it for you, but the, the words went something like this, Oh Lord, it's hard to be humble when you're perfect in every way. I can't wait to look in the mirror because I get better looking each day. <laughs> to know me is to love me. You know, oh Lord, it's hard to be humble. I think Mac Davis was probably right. It's tough sometimes to be humble. Particularly when we do all the work and somebody else gets all the glory and you know we want to say, hey, Thanks to my hard work, this was accomplished. It's tough and it's hard to be humble. Jesus one day was out preaching and teaching and in the audience there were a bunch of uh, church people there. A bunch of preachers and teachers and Pharisees and lawyers. And Jesus talked about humility. I, I want us to hear what Jesus said. If you have your Bibles, you can turn with me to the 23rd chapter of the Gospel of Matthew. And then Jesus said to the crowds and his disciples, The scribes and Pharisees sit on Moses' seat. Therefore, do whatever they teach you and follow it, but do not do as they do, for they do not practice what they teach. They tie up heavy burdens hard to bear, and lay them on the shoulders of everyone. But they themselves are unwilling to lift even a finger to move them. They do all their deeds to be seen by others. For they make their shoulders broad and their fingers long. They love to have the place of honor at banquets. And the best seats in the synagogues. And to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces. And to have people call them rabbi. But you are not to be called rabbi. For you have one teacher. And you are all his students. And call no one father on earth. For you have one father, the one in heaven. Nor are you to be called instructors. For you have one instructor, the Messiah. The greatest among you will be your servant. And all who exalt themselves will be humbled. And all who humble themselves will be exalted. That twelfth verse again. And all who exalt themselves will be humbled. And all who humble themselves will be exalted. The word of God today for the people of God. Thanks. Will you join me in prayer? Gracious God, we pray this day that you search our hearts and our souls. And that you remind us of who we are as your children. Who we are as your people and your disciples. And now Lord may the words of all of our mouths and even the meditations of all of our hearts. May they truly be acceptable in your sight. For you O Lord and you alone you are our strength and you are our redeemer. Amen. You know, it doesn't take you long reading the New Testament to come to this conclusion. The religious people, the church people of Jesus' day did not like Him very much. Now, part of the reason they didn't like Jesus was because He didn't have the credentials they had. He didn't attend the preacher's meetings in Jerusalem. He talked in funny ways where they would get everybody together and they would say, God loves people just like us. Jesus was out in the streets preaching, God loves the world, and that bothered the religious establishment. And then Jesus even spoke of himself as God's son, and he said this one day, which really got him very mad. He says, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. That really made the religious establishment mad. 
on top of all that, when Jesus was around church people, he didn't talk in a politically correct kind of way very often. I mean, did you hear that scripture? Jesus says, Oh, beware of the preachers and the teachers and the rabbis and the Pharisees and the lawyers and the Sadducees. Beware of them because they're going to walk around in the marketplace in long robes. And they're going to want everybody to notice them. They're going to want to be called certain names. They always seek the best seat at the table, at the banquet. They always want the seat of honor. Beware of them, Jesus said. Because they talk one way and they act another way. Beware of them. They have big heads and little hearts. So we can understand why the church people of Jesus' day didn't really like him a lot. I, I mean, he spoke in those kinds of terms. He, he evidently did not read the book How to Influence a People and Win Friends, did he? Jesus did not read that book. He spoke in that kind of way. And it's tough when people make fun of you. Not behind your back, but right in front of your face. That's what Jesus was doing here. How many of you have ever been made fun of? <laughs> you know, when my sister, my older sister Karen, who happens to be a Methodist preacher now, when she graduated from Emory and Henry College, she was what we call a US2 worker. In the Methodist church, that is, you're going to be a missionary, but you're going to be within the United States. Karen did not know what she wanted to do. She talked to my dad. She, she really wanted to go to the mission field. This was the best fit for her. They put her in Omaha, Nebraska. Downtown Omaha. And so that first summer that my brothers, there are four of us in the family, my older sister and then I have two other brothers, my brothers and I, we decided we would go visit Karen out in Omaha because, you see, we'd grown up in western North Carolina. We'd never been to the big city. It was an adventure. And so we all loaded up in my older brother's Mark's Ford Pinto station wagon. <laughs> and we drove across the country. Now, this was before air conditioning came standard. So it was hot. It took us a couple of days and we made it to Omaha and, and Karen gave us the address. It was in downtown Omaha and she was living with another US2 worker from New York. Her name was Susan. Karen says, I cannot wait to see y'all. And so we pulled up in the driveway. I want to give you a mental picture of the Ford Pinto and how we got out. My older brother Mark, he just had on shorts, no shoes, because it's hot, no shirt. He gets out of the car. I get out of the other uh, front seat. I have on overalls with no shirt. I have a bandana around my head. My little brother David, who we stuck in the back seat the whole way, he has on gym shorts and flip-flops, no shirt. That's how we roll into Omaha. Well, Karen, if you know my sister at all, she's a hugger. She came running out and she hugged all of us. So good to see y'all. And then she said, I want to introduce you to Susan. New York, Susan. Let me tell you what Susan said. She said, this is about the way I thought North Carolina men would look. I'm going to talk real slow so you can understand. How are things down there on the farm? Oh, who is she? And then the clincher came when she said, now, boys, I want you to come into our house. We have this thing called an indoor toilet. You've never seen that in North Carolina. Come in and see. I thought, who in the world does she think she is? You see, that's the way the religious people must have felt when Jesus spoke in those kinds of terms. Who does he think he is? calling us on the carpet like this. 
But you know, the longer I read the Scripture, the more I'm convinced that Jesus said certain things at certain times to get everybody's attention. Because this is a bunch of church people there. And when Jesus called the preachers on the carpet, I guarantee you there was silence. And now there's silence. And Jesus says what He really wants to say You've been looking at greatness in the wrong way. If any of you want to be great, you need to serve each other. And then he says the punchline of, of, of this whole talk. He says, all who exalt themselves are going to be humbled. And everybody who humbles themselves will be exalted. Jesus is saying this is a total reversal in God's kingdom. So, what do those words really mean to us? You see, very often, I think we still struggle with the same issues. Because when we look at great people, it's very often people with power, with prestige. People who are great sports stars. But, but Jesus says greatness is not seen in any of those things. Greatness is seen in how you serve one another. Maybe we need to hear those words over and over and over again. Because I don't know about you, but in my life, very often, I want to exalt myself. I, I want to say, look at all these things that I've done. Jesus says, that's not important in God's kingdom. Tell me how you've served me. That's important. Everyone who exalts themselves is going to be humbled. And everybody who humbles themselves will be exalted. Back at a previous appointment, 